Okay, grade 10s, let's talk more about reactions in aqueous solutions. We've already learned about physical and chemical properties and about the differences between physical and chemical changes. In this lesson, we look at whether dissolving a substance is a physical or a chemical change. In order to do this, we have to go to the lab. For this experiment, we will dissolve different substances in water and we will observe both physical and chemical changes. We will need four substances, sodium chloride, sugar, ammonium chloride and calcium chloride. Firstly, to make sure that this is a fair experiment, we need to make sure we have the same amount of reactants in each experiment. So, we are going to measure 5 grams of each of the substances on the mass meter and then place each of these amounts into a test tube. We must be careful to label each test tube as we do this. We have four test tubes with 5 grams of different substances in our test tube rack. Now we place the thermometer into test tube 1 with the sugar and note the reading on the thermometer. We also check that the water is at the same temperature as the sugar. We now add 20 milliliters of water to the test tube and stir gently with the thermometer to help the solid dissolve in the water. Look at the thermometer reading now. You will note that the reading has decreased very slightly. Now we are going to do the same with test tube 2, the one containing table salt. You will note that the temperature here has also decreased slightly. Now we are going to do the same with test tube 3, the one containing ammonium chloride. You will note that the temperature here has also decreased, but much more than in the other cases. Let's see what happens when we add water to the fourth test tube containing calcium chloride. Let's take the temperature before we add water. Now, let's add the water and see what happens. You will note that there has been a large temperature increase. To complete the experiment, we are going to place the four test tubes in the sun and allow them to evaporate. Here are the test tubes after the water has been allowed to evaporate. Note that the substances look exactly the same as they did before the experiment. Let's discuss what we observed during these experiments. Did you notice that when we dissolved the sugar or the salt into water, the temperature decreased slightly? The temperature decreased a lot when the ammonium chloride dissolved. Reactions where the temperature decreases are called endothermic reactions. When we dissolved the calcium chloride into the water, there was a large temperature increase. The reaction where the heat energy is given off is called exothermic reaction. At the end of the experiment, we placed the test tubes in the sun so that the water would evaporate. We noted that the substances all reformed solids that looked the same as they did before water was added. Now the question we need to consider is this. In each case, was the dissolving process a physical or a chemical reaction? We know that in a chemical change, the products of a reaction have different chemical properties compared to the reactants. We also know that when sodium chloride is dissolved in water, it conducts electricity because there are ions in the solution that are free to move. However, when sugar is dissolved in water, it does not conduct electricity because there are no ions in the solution that are free to move. This tells us that when sodium chloride dissolves, new substances are formed with different chemical properties. Solid sodium chloride breaks up into ions. We can therefore say that when sodium chloride dissolves, a chemical reaction takes place. In contrast, when sugar dissolves in water, no ions are formed, so dissolving sugar in water is a physical change. Before we finish, let's look at the difference between two of the types of reactions in aqueous solutions we have done in the series. Earlier in the series, we performed experiments to show electrolysis. We used an energy source in the form of a battery. This type of reaction that requires an energy source is called a non-spontaneous reaction. This means that the reaction does not proceed by itself, but needs outside energy. When we dissolved the calcium chloride in water, it gave off lots of heat energy. This reaction did not need any external energy in order to proceed. This type of reaction is called a spontaneous reaction. To recap, an endothermic reaction occurs when a reaction takes in heat energy and the measured temperature decreases. On the other hand, an exothermic reaction occurs when a reaction releases heat energy and the measured temperature increases. We also learned that a reaction that happens without an outside energy source is a spontaneous reaction, and a reaction that needs an outside energy source is a non-spontaneous reaction. 
That's all for now. Try some of the questions in the task video and do visit our website for more about Acquia solutions. Goodbye.